Anyway, we want to say uh, Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tova to everyone that is with us uh, during this meeting, this uh, Saturday, Shabbat afternoon of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. You're welcome uh, to join us and we are so thankful to be able to have uh, the Word of God with us and to be occupied with the person of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, who came from heaven to become that Redeemer, the Messiah of Israel, and the Savior of this world. Let's pray together as uh, uh, we begin with the meeting for today, and the topic we have to do with the Feast of Trumpets, uh, called also as the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Let's pray together. Abba, Father, we just ask your blessing uh, upon uh, our meeting today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for your love and care for us, Abba Father. We pray this Rosh Hashanah uh, a service. We ask your blessing upon our people of Israel that many from among our people will come to know Yeshua, our Messiah. We pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved uh, uh, brothers and sisters and dear friends, I have chosen a few verses, both in the uh, Tanakh, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and in the Brit Hadasha, the New Testament. I would like you, please, to turn with me uh, to these passages as we read the Scripture together. Uh, of course, we know that it is a season. Tomorrow, after sundown, Rosh Hashanah will begin. That will be the first uh, day of the month of Tishrei at sundown. And for our people of Israel, for the Jewish community worldwide, that is a very, very solemn, a beginning of a solemn uh, day. In fact, it's a solemn season that begin, the, the, what we call it the, the Feasts of Tishrei. It's very interesting because uh, during those feasts, uh, the new year for the Jewish people, called also Rosh Hashanah, for the Jewish people is very unique because the people of Israel do not begin. This is the conservative, the religious conservative, sincere in the things of God. Uh, they do not begin the new year with partying or with celebration in a sense of, uh, or drinking and all these kind of things. They begin very, uh, in a solemn way, Rosh Hashanah, because for the Jewish people, the Feast of Trumpet, that is Rosh Hashanah, beginning a new year, a new civil year, in which the people of Israel have to realize, uh, according to the teaching of the, of the spiritual leaders, uh, we will also see what the scripture teaches us about it, but they are preparing themselves before God, uh, recognizing that this uh, head of the new civil year, and I'm emphasizing the word civil, not the religious, but the civil year, is a, a, the beginning of a time in which God, as a judge, is sitting on his throne, a, a judging the whole universe, and that God will be the one that ultimately will be the one that determine whether the person, uh, how he or she live their lives, and whether they will continue to live and be blessed for the following year. And that's why uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the uh, for beginning of the fall feast of Israel, for the Jewish people, for our own nation, is very unique and very important. And for them, they realize that they need to turn to God in repentance in view of the Day of Atonement, Yom HaKippurim, which will be 10 days later. We will talk about it in a moment, but I would like you please to turn with me, first of all, to the Word of the Lord. And so let's turn to Leviticus, uh, chapter 23. And in Leviticus chapter 23, we read in verse 23, 24, and 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the seventh month, ye shall have a Shabbat, 
a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets or blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Verse 27, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The second passage I would like to read, it is found here in the book of Numbers, and in Numbers chapter 29 is another portion that I would like to read with you, my dear brothers and sisters. In the first six verses of Numbers, in Hebrew, and the word is Bamidbar in the wilderness, uh, Numbers chapter uh, 29, that is, in the first six verses, there, listen to what we read. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It is a day of blowing of trumpets unto you. Verse 2. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, without blemish, and the meal offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals for a bullock, and two tenth deal for a ram, and one tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. Verse 5 and 6 says, And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you, besides the burnt offering of the month and the meal offering and the daily burnt offering and his meal offering and their drink offering, according to their manner for a sweet savor unto the sweet, so a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. That's the second passage that I read. Now please turn with me to another passage. This is found now in the book of Isaiah, just one verse there, or two verses. The last two verses of Isaiah chapter 27. Now Isaiah prophetically, later on look in a prophetic way, look to the future of Israel, and he's saying in verse 12, 12 and 13, he said, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great trumpet shall be blown. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcast of the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. I read now, this is the third passage. I want to read one more passage, or perhaps two. The, second, the, the, the fourth passage that I would like to read it is found in the book of Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew. And I would like you, please, to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, and verses 27 to 31. And I will try, with the help of the Lord, to link together all these passages. Matthew, chapter 24, and there we read in verse uh, 20. 7. I'll read actually verse 28. For Well, let me read verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcasses is, the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, 
and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see this, the Son of Man coming in, in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. And listen to verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the others, to the other. And then really, beloved brothers and sisters, just that we will have all the passages together, I would like you to read with me uh, in the book of First Thessalonians, another passage in the Brit Hadasha. This is passage that we also Aware of First Thessalonians chapter four, and I want you to read with me these verses as well. Shaul Paul is writing to the believers in the city of Thessalonica, and he uses the same expression in connection with the trumpet. And he said to them, he said to them in verse thirteen, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep." that ye saw not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, in Yeshua, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Mashiach, the dead in Christ, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to, with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, please bear with me. I have read five passages for us all to connect them together. I will seek with the Lord's help uh, to connect these passages together. So as I'm sharing with you today, Rosh Hashanah meeting, I would like really to point to five things for all of us to kind of uh, put in our mind together with the help of the Lord. Number one, I would like to give an introduction to the Feast of Trumpets, which also in Jewish history called Rosh Hashanah, the, the, the Jewish New Year. Secondly, I would like to explain a little bit about the meaning of the name of the feast, the Feast of Trumpet. Thirdly, I would like to go back also and read the portion of the biblical instruction that God gave to our forefathers in biblical days. Fourthly, I'd like to point to the prophetic implication concerning the future a prophetic a meaning of the Feast of Trumpet. And fifthly, I would like to apply this. What is the application of the Feast of Trumpet in relationship to the church, to the assembly of the living God in these present day? So the first thing I would like to uh, mention, beloved brothers and sisters, that uh, if you go back with me to Leviticus chapter 23, in Leviticus chapter 23, we learn that God gave our forefathers seven feasts. Now, those of you that know of the chart of these that we usually use to present before you of the seven feasts of the Lord, know that these seven feasts that were given by God to his people Israel were given to Israel in the time where God gave the law to his people Israel. And while they may have not understood what you and I understand today, God gave a yearly cycle of a celebration of Moadim, or appointed season, in which Israel the nation were, in, were, were commanded uh, to abide by the appointments that they have uh, with uh, the Lord. 
Just as we are looking at the uh, seven feasts of the Lord, we have the feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, uh, the feast of first fruit, the feast of Pentecost or Shavuot, the feast of trumpets, uh, the day of atonement, and the feast of tabernacles. Uh, Pesach, uh, Matzot, uh, uh, first fruit is uh, the, the feast that uh, speaks about the, uh, the, the first fruits that was risen from the earth, and uh, it is a feast that was uh, unique as well. And everyone, and then the feast of Pentecost, trump, trumpets, atonement, and the feast of tabernacle. You notice that between the, the first four feasts and the last three feasts, there was some time in between, sometime between three to four months in between. And every one of these feasts is speaking to us of uh, something in relationship to God, in relationship to the land of Israel. But for us who are believers today in the Lord Jesus the Messiah, we understand that every one of these feasts is relating to the person and to the work of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. For example, you notice that the Feast of Passover, we read that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Christ, Messiah, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. The Feast of if Unleavened Bread represents of the purity of Christ, the purity of the Messiah, who is the sinless one. And, and uh, it speaks of his perfect life. The Feast of First Fruit, where the first fruit is spoken about in Scripture, it's speaking about the resurrection of the Messiah. Remember 1 Corinthians 15, Christ became the first fruits of them that sleep, or them that slept, because it speaks of the resurrection of the Messiah. So Passover, his death, unleavened bread, his perfection, first fruit speaks of his resurrection. And then we have the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Uh, seven weeks, 49 days plus one, coming to the word 50. In the Greek, we call it uh, uh, Pentecost. In Hebrew, it is called Shavuot. 50 days after, then, as you know, the new covenant was formed, the body of Messiah was formed, these two wave loaves that were to present before the Lord with leaven represent the Jews and the Gentiles who are sinners by nature, by accepted by God together on the basis of the finished work of the Messiah who became the Passover lamb. These were the, f the spring feast of the Lord. They have, been, they, have, they have been done historically, even though our people are still celebrating these, these feasts every year. But when it comes to the fulfillment of these feasts, all has been done and fulfilled by the coming of the Messiah at his first coming to becoming the path to become the Passover lamb, by living this perfect sinless life, by rising from among the dead, going to glory, sending the Holy Spirit of God, and according to Acts chapter 2, the assembly, the ecclesia was born, the new covenant had its beginning. In fact, I want to read to you in Leviticus chapter 23, just the first few verses where we do read, listen to this, in verse 1 to, uh, to verse uh, 4, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord. In Hebrew, Moadei Adonai, the word for feast, is not merely just a celebration. It comes from the Hebrew word moed, an appointed season. And God gave Israel the yearly cycle, an appointed day for every feast to be celebrated. And of course, in a, in a, a typically, he's also having an appointed season. 
in which the Messiah would come. He will give himself as the Passover lamb. He will live a perfect life. He will be resurrected from among the dead. And the Holy Spirit of God will come and will form what is known to us today, the body of Messiah, a composition of Jews and Gentiles who belong to the uh, to the church, to the assembly. Well, listen to what we read. Uh, concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even these are my feasts. I want to emphasize this, beloved brothers and sisters, while he gave, while God had given these feasts to his earthly people, Israel, but they were his feasts. It were, the, the, the feasts were his appointed season. He is the one that established these feasts because in the greater program of God, it's not only speaking about the yearly cycle, but it speaks about God's plan and program for Israel, for the church, for the whole world. That is the program of God that is found here in Leviticus chapter 23. Notice that we read in verse 4 now. I'm jumping over verse 3, and in verse 4 he says, These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation, which ye shall proclaim, listen to this, in their seasons. The word for season, once again, be-mo-adam, be-mo-adam, ba-mo-adim shelaem, in their appointed season. No one could change these dates they must be celebrated and kept by the nation of Israel in the actual dates that were given to us in the Hebrew scriptures. Passover began on the 14th day of the month of Nisan. Feast of unleavened bread on the 15th day of the month of Nisan. Then the first fruit is the following day. Fifty days later, the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. And these dates were given to us in God's word. And Israel was committed to abide by that which God had instructed them. Sadly, of course, in Israel history, many times Israel did not follow through in obedience to the word of God, yet God still demanded this from his people. So it is interesting to notice that, that these feasts that the Lord had given to Israel were actually spring feasts. And again, let's, when we look at the chart, we see that it's not only spring feasts, because there were also additional uh, three feasts which are called uh, uh, the fall feasts of uh, the Lord. In other words, what we learn from this, that as the first four feasts have passed by, the next feast are the fall feasts of the Lord. They are also uh, going uh, uh, to be uh, fulfilled. So now we are going back to our chapter in Leviticus chapter uh, 23, and now you notice that when we arrive to verse 23, we have already covered uh, the first uh, 22 verses. We have already covered the first uh, four feasts of the Lord. And now the, uh, the Lord will speak to Israel concerning the fall feast of the Lord, which will begin at the seventh month. Now it is very interesting because at the seventh month, God gave such an instruction to Israel that it was extremely interesting. He says, listen to this, verse 23, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of trumpets. He continue in holy convocation, and then he says, You shall do no servile work therein, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Notice some four or five things that we have here in the instruction of the Lord in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23 and 20. To 25. First of all, you notice in verse 24, he said, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day. In other words, the first 
day of the seventh month is the day when Israel is to have this unique feast that is called the Feast of Trumpets. Notice that, that it must be on the first day, must be on the seventh month. Now imagine, biblically speaking, the first, the beginning of the year for the people of Israel was in the day of Passover, the 14th day of the month of Nisan, was actually biblically, spiritually, because of redemption, it was for Israel the first day, the first month of the year. We read it in Exodus chapter 12. But here we are hearing some information, we read information from the Lord that he said that the seventh month, just look at the chart one more time. Uh, uh, hopefully you might have the chart in your own hands if you don't. Just uh, visualize this in your mind. In the chart, we find out that the seventh uh, feast, the, 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 the seventh month, the, the fifth feast is the Feast of Trumpet. And you notice what happened, that here God is instructing the people of Israel to blow the shofar. It is a, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet. So it's the first day of the seventh month, and then he tells them that it's a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet. You notice that we don't have a reason for this here, in this context. So Israel uh, were commanded to blow the shofar as a memorial, the word for memorial, it's zikaron tua in Hebrew. It is a memorial, a memorial before the Lord, something to remember, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet. The word again for memorial is zikaron, is to remember. And then over the generation, the, uh, the spiritual leaders of Israel who did not know the reason, why does God require from the people of Israel to blow on that day, on the first day of the, of the month of Tishrei, to blow the shofar? Why is it, why he's calling it a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet? Well, because they did not know the reason, and we don't have the reason here, many views over the generation came to fruition. In fact, the, the spiritual leaders of Israel believe that on the first day of the month of Tishrei, God created the universe. And because God created the universe on the first day of the month of Tishrei, it is really becoming the new year, the new beginning. That's why the Hebrew name for the Feast of Trumpet, beside Yom Tu'ah or Zikaron Tu'ah, there is another name to it which you and I know today that is called Rosh Hashanah, the beginning, Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. And you will find the people of Israel and the Jewish community, wherever they are, they will wish each other to have a Shana Tova, a Happy New Year. But there's another thing that is important that we have been taught over the years by the spiritual leaders of Israel because there is no reason that God gives here in this text. Now, you and I know the prophetic implication because we have the complete canon of Scripture. And you and I know that it's symbolically and typically speaking about the future restoration of the people of Israel because we have the complete canon of Scripture, including the New Testament. But for them, historically, they did not have this information in a full sense of the word that you and I have today. We have it today because the Messiah has come. The Lord Jesus has come. He died on the cross. He paid for our sins. We know that he promised that he will come again. We have the complete canon of scripture. But they didn't have that full knowledge that you have, you and I have today. So there is over the generation, there were many, many lessons or uh, uh, implication and uh, 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 we would say instruction that the spiritual leaders uh, gave to our forefathers. Well, they called the name Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, and the spiritual leaders of Israel believe, and I'm telling you, beloved brothers and sisters, this is becoming a solemn 
a day tomorrow after sundown for the Jewish people because the Jewish people are taught and we believe, we understand from what the rabbis teach that God is also sitting as a judge and that he is evaluating the life of his people. And not only the life of his people, but the life of all mankind. And that God is evaluating the life of the people uh, that that they they are accountable to him and he opened books. And there are three books that he's opened, the book of the righteous, the book of the unrighteous, and the book that are those who are neither righteous nor unrighteous. And that everyone that his name is not written in the book of the righteous, they have 10 days until the day of atonement to repent before the Lord in order that they will be accepted, that their name will be written in the book of life, the book of the righteous. That is what we are taught by the spiritual leaders of Israel uh, today. So Rosh Hashanah is a very solemn day for our people. Uh, the, The attendance in the synagogue is very, very high. Many would go to the synagogue in repentance and you will hear the blowing of the shofar, which is called the day of a memorial day. Notice that again, it says in Leviticus 23 verse 24, it is a Shabbat, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet, zikaron. When the shofar is blown, the people of Israel understand that they are called by God to remember that they belong to him and they need to repent and to turn away from their wrong way and to be restored unto the Lord. In fact, it is also understood that the memorial is to remind God of his ancient people who have gone astray and to restore them back to himself. And these days, beloved brothers and sisters, will be days in which the shofar will be blown and the Jewish people will seek forgiveness from uh, the Lord. Of course, you and I, who belong to the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, we understand that we also needed to repent and to confess our sins before God and that we receive forgiveness from God not on the basis of what we have done or what we do or the manner whereby we work or earn our salvation, that we we receive forgiveness from God on the basis of the shed blood, of the sacrifice of the Messiah who died for us on a shameful uh, cross. And that's why, notice that, in verse 25, of Leviticus chapter 23, God said to his people Israel in days of old, ye shall do no servile work therein. And then he said, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. In other words, sacrifices had to be offered. Blood had to be shed. An animal had to die in order to make an atonement for the sins of the nation of Israel. Of course, today, sadly, we don't have any longer the sacrificial system in the temple in Jerusalem. We don't have the temple there. We don't have the altar there. We don't have the sacrifices there. Why? Because the Mashiach has come some 2,000 years ago, and he provided himself as a ransom for many. He paid. He fulfilled all that which was spoken of him in days of old. That's why you notice, if you turn with me now to Numbers chapter 29, you will notice how specifically the the the, uh, the law, Moshe, was speaking to Israel concerning the sacrifices, while in Leviticus 23 verse 25, he only mentioned that there is a need to offer sacrifices. In Numbers chapter 29, he gives us additional instruction concerning the sacrifices. And remember, beloved friends and dear brothers and sisters, that all these sacrifices that are spoken about in the Word of God were a shadow and a picture 
of the greater and the greatest sacrifice of the Messiah Yeshua who was uh, who have come to this world to give himself a ransom for many. Listen to the verses in Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, once again, this is the fall season, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work in it. Listen again, a day of the blowing of the trumpet. While in Leviticus chapter 23, it's called the memorial of the blowing of the trumpet, Zikaron Tua. Here it is called the day of the blowing of the trumpet, Yom Teruah, in two different names, very similar, Zikaron Tuah, Yom Tuah. Zikaron Tuah means a memorial of the blowing of the trumpet, Yom Tuah means a day of the blowing of the shofar, of the trumpet. And then he continues. In Numbers chapter 29, and he's unfolding before the people of Israel the necessity for the blood atonement, for the sacrifices. And he says in verse 2, and he shall offer a burnt offering, the Olah, that which rises up to God's nostrils, for a sweet savor unto the Lord. One young bullock and one ram and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. Again, the sacrifice was, was so important because every sacrifice pointing to the Mashiach that would come in the fullness of the time. And even though they were blowing the shofar on the day, they could never neglect to offer the blood sacrifices on the altar. So we find out the first one was the burnt offering, the Olah, the rising up, that which is rising up to God's nostril. But not only the Olah. He continued in verse 3 on, of Numbers 29. And their meal offering shall be of, the, of, of flour mingled with oil, three tenths deal of a bullock, and two tenths deal for a ram, and one tenths deal for one lamb throughout, uh, throughout the seven lambs. The second offering was the mincha, the meal offering. The meal offering was a bloodless sacrifice, and it represented the, the perfect life of the Mashiach, who would live a sinless life, who will live a life that will be pleasing to God from the day that he was born until the day that he offered himself a ransom for many. How wonderful to see the application here to the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of this world. But it doesn't stop here, beloved brothers and sisters, when it comes to the day of uh, the blowing of the trumpet. He continues in verse 5 and in verse 6, and he says, And one kid of a goat offering for a sin, notice, uh, one kid for, uh, of a goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. You see, beloved brothers and sisters, it's not only the Olah, it's not only the Mincha, and it's not only the Chata'a, it is the sin offering that had to be offered on that altar, beloved brothers and sisters. Why? Because not as to make an atonement for you, to make an atonement for the people of Israel. And while the shofar will be blown on the Feast of Trumpet, the sacrifices had to be offered. The burnt offering, the meal offering, the sin offering. And as you read in verse 6, he is telling Israel, these specific offering will be in addition to that which you should bring every day. Listen to that, verse 6. Beside the burnt offering of the month and the meal offering of the daily, uh, uh, the meal offering of the uh, of the daily burnt the, the daily burnt offering and the meal offering and their drink offering according unto their manner for a sweet saving sacrifice, uh, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, the day. 
uh, of the blowing of the shofar, of the blowing of the trumpet, is an amazing period of time in the in days of old, which the instruction are clearly given to us in Leviticus 23, verse 23 to 25, and Numbers chapter 29, verses 1 to 6, clearly present before us the day that is a unique day in which on the first day of the month of Tishrei, uh, the blowing of the shofar will take place, burnt offering, meal offering, sin offering, and also drink offering will be offered to the Lord. This is important to understand. And though, beloved brothers and sisters, while our people do not understand because they do not have the New Testament, they do not read the New Testament, and they do not accept that Yeshua is the Messiah, you and I who understand it can see the wonderful plan of God throughout that uh, seven uh, feast that he has given to the people of Israel. So we have covered, first of all, the introduction. God gave seven feasts to the people of Israel. Secondly, we have also mentioned the fact that the meaning of the name of the feast is called Zikaron Tua, memorial of the blowing of the trumpet, and Yom Tua, a day of the blowing of the trumpet, found in these two passages. Yet we have also learned that for the people of Israel, the spiritual leaders gave it an additional name, and that name is called the day that is called the head of the year. And that's why in a day like today, the people of Israel, or like I should say when sundown would come tomorrow, on the first uh, day of Tishrei, that the Jewish people will begin a time uh, of repentance before the Lord. Now, mind you, the whole previous month, the month of Elul, was already a month that it was already in preparation for this day of the blowing of the trumpet, the Jewish people will already begin in some conservative homes, in some conservative synagogues, synagogues, people will go to the synagogue and already then will have the whole month. It's called the month of slichot, forgiveness. They will cry to the Lord for mercy and for forgiveness. Again, we as believers understand that the only ground upon which God can forgive our sin is on the basis of the shed blood, on the basis of the sacrifice. And because there are no sacrifices today, blood is not shed, God cannot forgive unless one will believe in the person of the Messiah who once and for all, our Lord Jesus the Messiah came and died on the cross and paid for the sin of this world. And praise God for us who are believers, we have this assurance today. So we don't only have the seven feasts presented before us, we also have the meaning of the names that is given to us in Scripture. We have spoken about the biblical instruction in Leviticus chapter 23 and Numbers chapter 29. I, know, I want you right now to also look at this with me for a moment, at the prophetic aspect of the Feast of Trumpet. And for, you, for this, I would like you to turn with me uh, to Isaiah chapter 27. It is so important to understand, again, when you look at the chart and you see the seven feasts, you look at this chart, you see the seven feasts of the Lord, you see that the feast of a trumpet is in a fall season. It is in the seventh month of the yearly cycle that God had given to the people of Israel. The spring feasts are gone. Passover passed away. Unleavened bread have passed away. The first fruit is passed away and Shavuot, Pentecost, have gone. In between the, the uh, third month and the fourth all the way to the sixth and seventh month, there is that uh, nearly three, three and a half months have passed by. 
The Jewish people are scattered. Our people are scattered all over the nations of the world. And if God is being faithful to fulfill the first four feasts in the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, he also is going to be faithful to fulfill the four feasts, which really represent before us the second coming of the Messiah. If he was the Passover, who was the sinless one, who died and was raised from among the dead, and sending the Holy Spirit of God, establishing the new covenant and forming the body of Messiah, we live somehow now in between the uh, a time after the, the church, the assembly was born, and we live for that long period of time in between the uh, spring feast and the fall feast. And soon and very soon, these final three feasts of the Lord will come and take, and take place one after the other. You will notice, beloved brothers and sisters, that the Feast of Trumpet and the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles, a, a, a Tua, a Atonement, Kippurim, and Tabernacles, Sukkot, are really following immediately one after the other. The first day is the Feast of Trumpet. The tenth day of Tishrei is the Feast, the Day of Atonement. The fifteenth day of Tishrei is the Feast of Tabernacle. And these three fall feasts of the Lord represent a wonderful a future a restoration at the second coming of the Messiah, a restoration of Israel, but also a blessing to the whole world. We who belong to the assembly, to the ecclesia, we are represented here uh, when the church will be raptured out of here. As we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the last trump, we will be taken out of this world. The rest of the feasts will be coming into fruition. The Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacle. Now notice that as we're looking at a chart and we see that before us, I want to read before you the prophecy of Isaiah, and I will link with it some other passages to see. God promised not only that he will bring the Messiah at his first coming and to become the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, but God also promised beloved brothers and sisters in the Hebrew scriptures that he is intending to restore the people of Israel to himself. And so the Feast of Trumpet become a, a feast that is representing the restoration of the people of Israel back to their land. Our people, the Jewish people, are now for two thousand years are scattered throughout the nations of the world. It is only since 1948 where God have allowed the Jewish people to establish a state, a nation in the uh, land of Canaan, the land of Israel. But again, to remind you, Israel is not yet regenerated, born of the Spirit of God as yet. Because while Israel, in a, in a small way, is already back in the land, the Feast of Trumpets speaks about the, a, res, a restoration of all the nation, all the Jewish people who are scattered all over the nations of the world, to regather them, uh, to regather them back to the land. It is a physical regathering of the Jewish people back to the land. And so Isaiah, prophesying some 700 years, before the Messiah came, just before the Jewish people were to be taken by the Babylonian uh, in 586 BC to be taken to Babylon, the temple will be destroyed, the kingdom will be handed over to the Gentile world, and the, the times of the Gentiles will begin. Isaiah made a promise by the word of the Lord, and he said, and it shall come to pass. Listen to this, Isaiah chapter 27 and verse 12. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the streams of Egypt. And ye shall be gathered. Notice that, beloved brothers and sisters. The same God that will scatter Israel he is now promising to gather his people, physical regathering to the land of Israel. He says, ye shall be gathered, listen to this, one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great trumpet shall be blown. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, in the outcast, in the, in the land of Egypt, and they shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. This feast of trumpet, notice that the prophet Isaiah is using the word trumpet here again. Why? Because the blowing of the shofar is a day of memorial to remind God on the one hand, not that he needs to remember, he knows all things, and to remind the people of Israel on the other hand, and they surely need to remember uh, their accountability to the living God, that they need to be restored back to the Lord. And that uh, feast, beloved brothers and sisters, the Feast of Trumpet serve to speak of the physical regathering of the people of Israel back to the land. We might say that it will take in some stages, because already we see that there are nearly 7 million or more Jewish people are today in the land of Israel, while the remaining Jews of the people of Israel are still scattered all over the nations of the world. But there will be a regathering back to the land, not yet a, a spiritual restoration. Israel will have to go through the Day of Atonement, the Tribulation period, which in the end of the uh, Tribulation period, Israel as a nation will be restored back uh, to the Lord. Let me read you what uh, Jeremiah wrote in his 31st uh, chapter, Jeremiah chapter 31. I want to read these verses to you as well, beloved brothers and sisters. Jeremiah said in his chapter verses 10 and 11, Jeremiah 31 verse 10 and 11, Jeremiah said, hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. Say, he that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and uh, uh, ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. In other words, God had promised, beloved brothers and sisters and dear friend, that he that scatter Israel will gather Israel back to the land. And the blowing of the shofar, the feast of trumpet, is a reminder. It is a type and a picture and a symbol in the seventh feast of the Lord to remind uh, Israel that God will gather them one, one day back to the land of Israel. But it's not enough to be regathered only back to the land because God wanted Israel to be uh, to go not only through physical regathering, but God wants Israel to be spiritually redeemed and to have a, 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 a life relationship with himself. And they have to come to faith in the person of our Lord Jesus the Messiah. There must be a regeneration. And that is going to happen to the nation of Israel at the end of the tribulation days. So now please go with me to the New Testament, just to read for us these verses in Matthew chapter 24, where the Lord Jesus the Messiah himself before he died, before he went to the shameful altar, to the cross, he said, listen to this, in verses 27, 28, 20, 
29 and 30. And he says, listen to this. He's speaking to his disciples before he went to the cross. And he said to them, as the lightning cometh out from the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, the carcass is there will the eagles be gathered together. And this is a very interesting remark because the people of Israel will have to go through the tribulation period. And you know, just like the eagle, the eagle goes where the carcass is, where, the, where there is, and, and it, it's a representation of the opposition that Israel will experience because of the armies of the Antichrist that will go at the, at the tribulation period seeking to destroy the people of Israel. And ultimately the Lord will be the one who will judge the Antichrist and those that have followed after him. And they will be destroyed there. God will destroy them. And notice what the Lord Jesus is saying, that for where the carcass is, where those that are dead there, to there will the eagles be gathered together. In other words, I'm going to come to the same place, the coming of the Son of Man be, just as wheresoever carcass is, there will the eagles be be coming together. And then he says immediately after the tribulation, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Here we can see a period of darkness. Darkness in it in, is it will happen some of the dark time, the shutting off of the sun, if you will, during the tribulation period. We can see it throughout the book of Revelation. If you read Revelation chapter 6 to 19, you will see that there will be a period of time of darkness. And then at the end of these dark days, the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Messianic title, Ben HaAdam, the Mashiach, will come. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. In other words, beloved brothers and sisters, the people of Israel will be regathered, first of all, in the Feast of Trumpet to the land, but they will not be yet a restored nation. They will have to go through the tribulation period. And if you know, beloved brothers and sisters, from the book of Daniel, from the book of Revelation, that there will be a rise of this wicked man that is called the, the false Messiah who will rise and who will oppose the nation of Israel, inflicting on them persecution such as never was before. But then, beloved brothers and sisters, at the end of all this, the Son of Man will appear in the cloud. And you notice what we just read we just read that, that the Son of Man will come and the tribes of the earth will mourn. The tribes of the earth is in reference to the nation of Israel who will recognize that he was the Mashiach whom they did not accept for 2,000 years already. Israel as a nation will acknowledge him, but not only Israel, nations that will be here on earth during the tribulation, they will recognize that he was indeed the Redeemer. There will be a mourning, and they shall see the Son of Man. I'm often amazed at this promise. The very Son of Man, Ben HaAdam, who was rejected at his first coming, at his second coming, everyone will see him. And they will recognize that he is indeed the Son of Man, Ben HaAdam, the Messiah himself. And he will come with his Shekinah glory and he will appear, notice that, with power, verse 30, and with great glory. The Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Son of Man, he is predicting here in this Matthew chapter 24, before his death on the tree, 
He is here at his first coming. He is predicting his second coming. And what we really learn here is that Lord Jesus is predicting his second coming to this earth when Israel as a nation will finally recognize him. And then we read, listen to this, and here he will connect again the, the Feast of Trumpet with this event that will take place. Remember, the Feast of Trumpet represents the physical restoration. The Jewish people by that time will be physically restored, but not yet spiritually regenerated. And therefore they will be scattered again, because the Antichrist will pursue them. The Jewish people will flee into Bozra, Petra, present-day Jordan, to be kept there for the second half of the tribulation. But then, beloved brothers and sisters, we see after they will acknowledge him. Hear the word of the Lord in verse 31. And he, that's the son of man, he shall send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet. Once again, he is using the word trumpet again. And he is applying this to the regathering once again the people of Israel back to the land and back to himself. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect uh, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the others. In fact, in a sense, what we have here is another uh, second regathering of the people of Israel back to the land, but by that time Israel as a nation will recognize that the Lord Yeshua indeed is that a promised Messiah. And that will happen, beloved brothers and sisters, at the end of the tribulation period, when ultimately Israel as a nation will accept the Messiah. Now I'm just about to end, and I would like just to read these verses here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. How does that apply to the believers today? Remember, the feasts were not made with the church. The feasts were made with Israel. And we who are part of the ecclesia, the called out one, we belong to the heavenly company today. All true believers, Jews and Gentiles, belong to the assembly, to the ecclesia, to the church today. Well, because the assembly, the church, the ecclesia will not be here, the Apostle Paul emphasized this using the same thought, the Feast of Trumpet. And he's speaking here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 to the believers at Thessalonica. And he's encouraging them to realize, as he said to them, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that, is, that fell asleep. There were already believers that have died. They have fallen asleep. They are absent from the body and they are present with the Lord. And so he's saying, I don't want you to be ignorant, misinformed concerning the believers that have already passed away and they are in the presence of the Lord. Don't you be misinformed, he's saying to them. And he's saying, you have hope. You are not like those that do not have hope. Don't sow as others which have no hope. The, the believers today in Yeshua the Messiah have a sure hope. And say so he's saying to them, for if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, he says, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, imagine, the Apostle Shaul Paul said, we. He was anticipating to be taken to be with the Lord already in his days. Now you and I live 2,000 years later, and we are still waiting ourselves today for the time where the Lord will take us to be with him in heaven. So he's saying, listen to this. He says, if we, be if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua... Will God bring with him? And then he said, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, 
Again, notice, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ, the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Notice the word caught up. That's where we get the word, uh, the, the word uh, harpazo in the Greek. It is the, we get the word rapture. Shall be caught up together to meet uh, uh, with them uh, in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And, sh- and so shall we ever uh, be with the Lord. He's speaking about the snatching up of the assembly. And he's connecting it with the Feast of Trumpet. Now, don't make a mistake, because the Apostle Paul does not speak about the seven trump sound in Revelation chapter, uh, uh, in, in, Reve- in the book of Revelation, which John received later on. And you know how we know it, because John received the book of Revelation some uh, uh, 30 years later. The information about the book of Revelation was given to the Apostle John 30 years later. Shaul Paul is speaking about the trump of God in connection with the trump of the Feast of Trumpet. Because the trump of God represents the regathering of the nation of Israel on the other hand, but also the snatching up of the assembly Uh, to be with the Lord in glory before the tribulation days will begin, beloved brothers and sisters. And so we learn from the Feast of Trumpet this amazing lesson that just as God fulfilled historically the first four spring feasts to the people of Israel in the coming of the Messiah, God is intending to fulfill the fall feast of the Lord in the coming future, that may be very soon, when the Messiah will come at his second coming uh, to, uh, of course, restore Israel to himself and establish the promised Messianic kingdom in the coming days. And that is fascinating for us to learn. And so once again, in your mind, as you look at this chart uh, of the seven feasts of the Lord, just imagine, beloved friend and dear brothers and sisters, we today live in the fall season, the first day of the month of Tishrei, representing the four seasons of the yearly cycle. But it is also representing the second coming of the Messiah and the restoration of the people of Israel Uh, uh, to himself and establishing of the Messianic kingdom in the future day. And so, beloved brothers and sisters, I'm just going to read and close with this final verse in uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 27 and verse 12 and 13, and with this we will end the meeting. It shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall beat off from the channels of the river unto the streams of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish. Imagine what that will be in the future day. Not only for the Jewish people, for Israel, but for the whole world, when God will restore Israel, when the Messiah, Jesus, that is now despised and rejected, he will come back and he will establish all that which he promised. No longer he will be rejected. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are waiting, we are longing for that day, and may the Lord hasten this day, beloved friend. May the Lord open your heart. If you are not yet a believer in Yeshua and Jesus the Messiah, I encourage you to open the Word of God and see what He has done for us in coming to this world to become the Lamb of God that took upon Himself the sin of of this world. May he hasten his coming back and establish the beautiful promise of the Messianic kingdom. 
May he do so even today. So, Father, we ask your blessing upon your word. Hasten the coming of the Mashiach. We pray thank you for the forgiveness that we as believers have already today because of what Yeshua have done for us. Bless your word. We pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Where we say to you, beloved friend, we say to you, Shabbat Shalom. God bless you and and Shana Tova. Until the next meeting, we say Shalom Shalom.